الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Welcome again to the stories of the prophets. We have described to you the creation of the universe and the story before the creation of Adam. And then we described how Adam was created and how Satan, Iblis, became the enemy of Adam. And Iblis was taken out of heaven as a punishment for him for disobeying Allah when he ordered him to prostrate to Adam. So Adam continued to live in paradise. And for a while, he felt lonely. He was the only human. There were no other humans at all. There were angels, there were creatures of Allah in heavens, but there were no humans. So, as he did not have any companion, he felt sad. So one day, while Adam was asleep, Allah, God Almighty, subhanahu wa ta'ala, took one of his left ribs and created from that a woman, Eve. In Arabic, his na her name is Hawa. Hawa min al haya from haya, haya life. So he, she was created from something living. So she's alive and was created from a living thing. And that's why she, her name is Hawa from haya, the living. So this was our mother, Eve, Hawa. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, O mankind, have piety to your guardian Lord who created you from a single person, then created from that person his mate. And from them scattered like seeds, countless men and women. So Hawa was created from Adam and was therefore not a separate cre creation. She was created from the same creation from the first human being, Adam. When Adam woke up from his sleep, he found this woman sitting beside him. So Adam asked Hawa who she was, and she replied that she was a woman. Adam then asked why she was created, and to this she replied, to live in tranquility, in peace, and happiness with you. So Allah's purpose for creating woman is so that she could live in harmony and tranquility. There is no struggle between sexes. This is an idea that is totally unacceptable in Islam. Women and men are different. Yes, they are humans, but they are different. And every one of them have their own uh, personality, their own abilities. And they are to live in tranquility, in peace, in cooperation, in love. This is the, this is the purpose of the creation of women. The angels saw Adam talking to Hawa. A creature they had never seen before. They don't know even her name. And she has not told Adam yet her name. So they went to Adam and asked him, who was she? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already told him and taught him her name. He knows the names of everything. And he said, she was Hawa. And they asked him, why was she called this name? And she, he said, because she was created from a living creature. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, our great messenger, had uh, this to say about women: that women have been created from the rib of Adam, and they are fragile. So make sure that you don't break it. Make sure that you treat women well. Don't be rough with a woman. So this means that we should be always tolerant with women. Uh, a woman cannot be forced to do something that is against her nature. It, she was created in a different nature than man, more emotional, more caring, more loving, more, more detailed. She has so many abilities that men don't have. And we are ordered not to force her to change her nature. Take care of women. That's what the Prophet ﷺ tells us. Take good care of women. Um, also, the saying of the Prophet tells us that Hawa was the most beautiful woman ever created. In the hadith, when the Prophet ﷺ describes Sarah, Sarah or Sarah, the wife of Ibrahim ﷺ, he said she was the most beautiful woman after Hawa, which means that Hawa, Eve, 
is the most beautiful woman ever created and shall be continues to be the, the queen of beauty for humans. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left Adam and Hawa to, to live in paradise, enjoy paradise. They were totally clothed, by the way, these pictures that we see in, in uh, Christian uh, you know, uh, artists and so on. It's totally un, un, not, not correct. They were totally clothed. They were, they were uh, enjoying heavens and... They, they lived in tranquility with each other in heavens. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked them to, to enjoy heaven except one tree. Don't eat from the fruits of one tree. This is mentioned in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God say, Almighty says, O Adam, dwell, you and your wife, in the garden and eat of the bountiful things therein, wherever and whenever you will, but approach not this tree, or you run into harm and transgression. So you will disobey your Lord if you do that. Adam and Hawa lived a prosperous life, luxurious life in heaven. I mean, this is paradise. What can you ask for more? And they were warned very clearly not to listen to Satan, Iblis. And they were warned very clearly not to eat from that one tree. Enjoy everything, but don't eat from that tree. And beware of Iblis, Satan, because he's your enemy. Make sure that he does not lure you into eating that tree. So they had everything they could ever want. What the hell? What, what more than paradise? So they enjoyed it and they did not approach that tree. Satan, who declared war against humans, especially against Adam, um, and uh, he, he insisted that he would not be the only one to be taken out from heaven. He wanted Adam to be taken out. So he continued to try to lure Adam into eating that tree. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned Adam from this enemy. God says in the Quran, O oh Adam, verily, this is an enemy to you and your wife, so let him not get you both out of the garden so that you land in misery. So there is in heavens enough for you not to go hungry and not to go naked not to suffer from thirst, nor from the sun's heat. So this verse very clearly states that Adam was not naked and he enjoyed and used all the beauties and benefits of paradise. But Satan continued trying to lure Adam and Hawa into disobeying God. And he would do that by whispering without being seen, making them think as if they are thinking themselves. See, many times when we do sins, it starts with thinking. Why don't I do this? Uh, I wish I could do this. These thinkings sometimes start from us, within us, and sometimes they are started by a devil. And we don't know how, but they are things that enter our minds, our thinking. We are not forced to do anything. We are just lured into it. So he, start, he started to lure them and he started to convince them that they should eat from that tree. And he told them a very strange thing. He told them, you know why not? you're not allowed to eat from that tree? Why? Do you know why you're forbidden from eating that tree? Because if you do eat it, you will be immortal. You will live forever. Or you will turn into angels. So you will not be any more humans. You will be elevated to the status of angels who are very beautiful. So he continued to lure them into that. And they were convinced. This whispering 
is mentioned in the Quran. When there's, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Satan said, Your Lord only forbade you this thrill so that you should be, become angels or live forever. Hawa, Eve, was the first one to listen to this temptation. And she was the first one to eat from that forbidden tree. And nothing happened to her. So she gave the fruits to Adam. And she lured him into eating from that tree. And he did. So Satan, Iblis, succeeded in leading man astray. After eating from that tree, immediately their clothes fell down and they became naked. And Adam and Hawa were so ashamed of their nakedness, nudity. Nudity is opposed to the human nature. Since the creation of humans, we are created with the, with the feeling that we must be clothed and we should not be naked in front of others except our spouses. But other than that, we should always be covered. And Adam and Hawa, when they were uncovered, they felt they are exposed to everyone and they felt ashamed. SubhanAllah, today, many people have been trained from their early childhood not to feel anything wrong about nudity. That's the wrong up upbringing. It is the nature of humans to be clothed. So they became naked when they tasted from that tree. And they began to take some of the leaves of the garden and cover themselves with it. And that's also mentioned in the Quran. So now humans sinned for the first time, the first sin disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by eating from that tree. Adam ran away, ashamed of what he has done, ashamed of his nakedness. And Allah, his Lord, called him and he said, Did I not forbid you that tree and tell you that Satan was your enemy? I warned you. It was a very clear warning. How could you disobey me? And he asked him, why are you running away, Adam? Can you run away from me? Adam replied, oh God, I am not running away from you. I am ashamed. I don't know what to do. I'm ashamed of my sin. I'm ashamed of my nakedness. So Adam confessed and he regretted his sin and disobedience to Allah. And he asked Allah for forgiveness. So that is a major difference between what he did and what Satan, Iblis, did. When Satan disobeyed and Allah asked him why, he did not ask for forgiveness. He insisted. He insisted on his sin. I am better than him. I would not bow down to him. I'm better than him. You created me from, her, from fire. You created him from clay. I would not listen to you. I would not obey you. That's what Iblis, what Satan did. But let's look what Adam did and Hawa also. When Allah asked them, when God asked them, why did you sin? They said, we are ashamed of what we did. This is in the Quran. They said, our Lord, we have wronged our own souls. If you forgive us not, and if you do not bestow upon us your mercy, we shall certainly be lost. God said, get you down from heavens. On earth you will dwell and live and struggle for your living. There you shall live. And there shall you die, and from earth you will be taken out again in the day of judgment. So in the above verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us the prayers. 
of a servant who had wronged themselves. We should confess that we have wronged and we should ask for forgiveness. That's what Adam did. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not punish him anymore. He punished him by taking him out of heavens, but forgave him after that. While Iblis, Satan, who disobeyed Allah and did not ask for forgiveness, he was cursed forever. And that is the marked difference between Adam and Satan. So now, no longer paradise. With this sin, humans no longer live in paradise, in heavens. They come down to earth. Adam descended down some place in Arabia, some scholars say in India, while Eve, Hawa, was sent down into Arabia, and there is no disagreement among Muslim scholars that we sh she was sent down to Jeddah, Jeddah on the Red Sea. Adam started to look for Eve everywhere, and Eve, Hawa, started to look for Adam and they met at the Mount of Arafat. This mountain, Arafat, is the mountain that Muslims gather on the day of pilgrimage, on Hajj. And it's called Arafat, the name, the word Arafat, from knowing each other. So they met each other at that mountain, and Muslims meet each other at this mountain on the days of Hajj. And they lived on earth, but now they have to struggle for food and struggle to make their clothes and struggle for everything. In heavens, it was total pleasure. There was no need to work, no need to struggle. But now the hardships of this earth started. And they started to have children. The scholars of Islam tell us that Adam and Eve had 40 children in 20 occasions, twins every time. And every time Ad, uh, Eve would deliver a boy and a girl, twins, boy and a girl. The first pair were Qabil, Cain, and his sister Kellen. The last pair were Abdul Mughif and his sister Ummul Mughif. And humans started to reproduce. The prophet, their prophet was Adam, who told them what he has seen in heavens. He told them about God and the angels and the jinn. He told them about uh, Allah and his attributes and heavens. And everyone was a believer. No single person was an unbeliever. Abu Dhar, the great companion of the Prophet وسلم, asked him, who was the first prophet of Allah? He said, Adam. He said, was he also a messenger? He said, yes. Some scholars say that Adam was the first prophet and Nuh, Noah, was the first messenger. But anyway, this is a difference of opinion among scholars. But Adam made laws to them. And by making laws, definitely he's a messenger. So, he was brought down. He knew about clothes. He knew about knowledge. He knew about industries, the beginning of industries. And he knew how to, to, to do everything. Uh, he knew how to make laws. He knew how to use iron and uh, uh, to cut wood and so on. So, uh, he knew also about farming and... Uh, caring of animals and uh, using fire and so on. So th this was not something that people acquired later on. Adam taught them how to do it because he was given that knowledge directly from God. And with that, humanity started, a civilized humanity started on earth. The continuation of the story of Adam and the first killing on earth and the death of Adam 
will be our next story, inshallah. Thank you for following up. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.